Hi, this is Joe Kwan, the Connection Counselor, and welcome to another episode of Executive Tuna. Do you ever feel like everyone is always so much further along than you are? And do you ever try to catch up by learning and kind of get frustrated at how difficult it is to learn or the time it's taking to learn? Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about how you can accelerate your learning catch up with others, and maybe even surpass them with a slightly different framing of how to approach learning. All right, how do we learn faster? And the great thing about today's episode is this, this can really apply to anything you want to learn. It can be something as... Uh, perhaps uh, generic as better public speaking and presentation skills. It could be something more specific like giving better performance evaluations or um, better networking. So uh, whatever you are trying to learn to improve, and it can also be like a technical thing like learning a manual or, or skill pretty better, you can use the principles today to learn faster and to accelerate your results. So one of the first things I want to share with you about learning uh, that I think we can do a little bit differently to improve our results is we often see learning as a bit of a, a seesaw, right? There's the doing and then there's like the kind of intake and the learning. And what I found is often we spend way too much time, like the seesaw is way too much tilted in favor of that kind of passive intake, reading, watching videos, listening to someone, right? So that's definitely a part of it. And you're not just going to, you know, start without knowing how to do anything. Um, but what helps a lot is when you actually spend a little bit more of that time also doing and sometimes even doing at an earlier stage, because what happens a lot is we don't feel like trying it until, oh, we're going to get every single piece right or we understand the theory perfectly versus going in doing it horribly, right? Because you don't know how to do it yet. And understanding, well, what parts were easy and what parts were difficult. And having that guide you a little bit more in terms of where you want to spend your time and what you're getting well and what you need more work on. So it's um, similar to put it in a more academic um, sort of setting. You know, I noticed that in exams, I always did better if I had a practice exam. And I took the exam first, like before I started restudying the material, just take the exam and you can say, oh, this part of the exam is so easy, but this part, I don't even remember learning it. So then you allocate more of your time learning the weaknesses and uh, just shoring up the strong parts because you already pretty much have it down. It's a much more effective way of learning and it accelerates you because you spend the energy where you need to and not equally across all parts when some parts definitely need more help than others. And I sort of rediscovered this uh, one year. I think it was, it wasn't during Sandy, but it was uh, in one of these horrible blackouts we had um, in the years following where we were out of power uh, in my house in New Jersey for a good three or four days just sitting in the dark. And uh, strangely enough, we had just ordered Rubik's Cubes. And so my son and I, we're learning how to do Rubik's Cubes in the dark because there weren't, you know, you couldn't watch Netflix or anything. There was no power. Um, so we were learning how to do Rubik's Cube. And this was something I had always wanted to learn from my childhood, um, but I could never really quite get it. But um, something about the way, uh, you know, I guess they're teaching it today um, was able to pick it up. And what I noticed is there's several stages to solving the cube. It's, it's not like you figure out how to do everything at once. So there's like stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. But as you go through each stage, you learn a technique. And as you start to do it, you think you know maybe in your head you realize what it is. But then when you start to actually do it, you realize, oh, okay, I totally don't understand that at all. And then you go back and you figure that out and you build and you iterate. But can you imagine trying to learn a Rubik's Cube without actually touching a Rubik's Cube? And then in a really desperate situation, the future of humanity uh, requires you to solve this Rubik's Cube. And then you're like, oh, I got this. I got all the theory. And then you have it in front of you and you start turning the thing and the right things are not happening. But you were like, oh, it was so clear in my head. That would not be the best approach. You would want to have drilled it, 
tried it in your hands many times before you ever had to do it under a high pressure situation. And that's the second point I want to share uh, about learning more quickly. Um, I know a lot of people don't like tests and, you know, I used to get tested all the time when I was studying Aikido and some people had the attitude, well, if I just understand how to do the technique, like why do I have to do the test? Like why do you need all that extra pressure? And the interesting thing is when you were forced to do something under pressure, whether it's time pressure, whether it's peer pressure, people watching, um, whether it's just ego pressure, right, of, of your ability to succeed, that makes a difference. And then you can really see how you perform under pressure and what you truly know and what you just kind of know and think you know. Because what happens in real life and at work is when you're called upon uh, to use these skills, it's often in a high pressure high pressure situation. It's, it's not just, you know what, try this and if it goes, that's great. It's like, we really need you to do this. Uh, you know, hope you were paying attention at that training because we really need you to do this now, right? So that actual pressure um, in a way helps crystallize what you know and gives you the ability to go back and shore up and fix the things that you don't know as well. And the third and final point I want to share with you about learning and learning faster has to do with shame and fear, right? Um, because you learn so much by doing, the quicker you start to put things out and do it, the quicker you'll get feedback and results. And let me use myself as an example for a moment. If you go back to the first podcast I did um, several years ago, Why It Works, maybe the audio wasn't as great, the graphics weren't as great, uh, my interview skills probably weren't as great. I was umming and humming a lot more in that video than I was, or that podcast, than I was seven, eight, nine, twenty podcasts in. And this executive tune-up is also a great example. If you watch the first uh, video in this series, it's called Between the Lines. Um, there's a lot of strange pixelating, like when I, when I over here where my hand is and, and where the table is over there, uh, you can see it pixelate going in and out because I use... Um, you know, the artificial software generated green screen. So sometimes the, the stuff in the back goes in and out. Um, you may see the graphics on materials that I've made, uh, the quality change over the years, um, usually hopefully for the better as I get a little bit better at using Canva. Now here's the thing. If I had waited until I got everything just right before I did it, I wouldn't get that feedback either from you my audience, or just for my own two eyes, because I can listen to my own podcast and I can watch these videos and say, hmm, that's not great. The other thing, um, sometimes the lighting is not as good because I hadn't figured out how to get the lighting exactly right. Today, I think the lighting's working pretty well. Maybe you can't even tell that that's a green screen um, behind me. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with the quality. I'm pretty happy with the audio. And things are going to continue to prove and iterate to become better. And that's because we're doing this today, right? I didn't wait till next week or next month when I had thought about more things. I was like, you know what? Let me spend five or ten minutes. Um, this is good enough. I'm building on what I have already to deliver you what's still a quality product, but it will never be perfect in my eyes. I'll always feel a little bit <laughs> like, like, like that kid, no matter what I produce, and that's okay. It's okay to feel that, but what do you do? You put out your best faith effort and you improve and you make it better because if it's just in your mind and you want to make it perfect, then you actually don't deliver anything. And if you don't deliver anything, you can't really help anyone. And that's sort of the key to be of service, to help people, to put out something interesting in the world, something that will help other people in their career. So that's what I'm trying to do with Executive Tune-Up. And thanks for coming in today. My name is Joe Kwan, the Connection Counselor. And, you know, it's taken me a while to finally get this catchphrase, like I often mess it up, but I think I got it now. To do your best, you have to be at your best. So tune in to Tune-Up. Thank you.